The warmest of greetings to you, and welcome to Happily Ever Teaching. This is the podcast to help you enthrall your learners in every subject under the sun using the best teaching method known to science, storytelling. To do this, we feature special guest educators who are passionately keen to empower your children. I am storyteller Chip Cahoon, and with me today is... Hi, I'm Helen, and I currently work with reception and year one children in Buckinghamshire. And I'm Nicola, and I currently work with year six children in Hampshire, and I've also spent time in my career hoping to motivate and inspire the next generation of teachers at Teacher Training College. And today we are seeing what art we can create with our dramatisation of The Great Fire of London. You can listen to the story by downloading our sister podcast, Fables and Fairy Tales, or search our website, epictales.co.uk, for Sir Tommy's Fire. There you'll find a video of me telling the story that you can share with your children. And if you sign up as an epic educator, you'll also get a copy as a paperback illustriously illuminated by comic book artist Dave Hingley, as well as the full audiobook for you to download at any time. All right, now, though, let's conclude our discussion with Helen and Nicola. Conclude it around Pudding Lane. So where where is the art in this story? I mean, are, are any of you going to do pyrography with your young learners? Do either of you know what pyrography is? No, please explain, explain more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I can imagine, but do, do, do explain. <laughs> uh, I, well, I, I mean, I, not speaking from experience here, um, my sister has had a go at pyrography and a good friend of mine has as well. And what I believe it is, is having essentially a soldering iron, but you're using it as a pen. So you burn your art and your calligraphy yes. into objects made made principally of wood i think yes i've seen that i just didn't know the name ah, yes okay. do you beautiful things don't they on wooden plaques and mm, things and yes yes i know i do know what you, you were talking about <laughs> so w w would you try that then with your young learners i'd have to find out more about it but that's exactly what i was going to say with the with the correct health and safety mm. <laughs> <laughs> in place. I don't see why not. It, yeah, it depends what it would involve. I'd imagine you'd want to have gloves, definitely, to make sure that no oh, fingers yes. get burned. And one-to-one -one attention yes, if you're yeah. doing it with four, four five and six-year-olds. Mm. But actually, it would be, if they could do it, wouldn't it be great for them to experience such a different form of mm. art than usual? Yeah, and get another idea of the, the way that fire and heat can be used. Yeah, definitely. I suppose there's some electronics that must come into it, because I don't think you're using a blow tool when you do pyrography, you're using essentially a, a metal filament that is being powered up. Yes. Yeah, I, I'd like to try that sometime. Mm. I'm just looking at some pictures of the equipment used. <laughs> yeah, I think that looks really interesting. Well, we, we've lost Helen, to, who's now doing an online course in pyrography. <laughs> <laughs> You've lost, lost me to pyrography. Yeah, no, I, you know, I think that would be looking at sort of how it's done. I think you could do that with, with young children, obviously with the Again, with the right yeah. adult ratio to make it all very safe. But I think they'd love that. Excellent. Yeah. There you go. So extra activity that we had not had on our list. There you go. Fantastic. Nicola, though, where's the art that you found for ages 7 to 11? Um, a couple of ideas. One is actually looking at the art from the time, obviously as linked to history as well, but looking at the different ways that the fire has been shared and in interpreted through art and, and looking at artists from the time. I haven't got a particular one in mind, but I think if I was doing this, I would find some specific artists and mm. compare them to each other and, and look at the media that they used for the art. Something I had, I've done before linked to World War II is the idea of having a silhouette image and then having the fire in the background. Mm. So whether that fire's possibly tissue paper and certainly um, poster paint works really, really well. Having bright, big flames and then a silhouette of the buildings yes. is, is quite an attractive display, actually. And the children seem to love the results that they get. And a slightly different form of art, but um, there's a timeline of events that happen in the story. And I think perhaps a comic book of the story would be really effective. Oh, so yeah. getting children to actually draw the different scenes in the story. And I think that would obviously it brings in um, English and literacy as well and the voice that we talked about on an earlier podcast uh, of the different characters but I think that children would really enjoy that I think there's a lot online that they do now where they copy artists doing cartoons yes. and I don't see much cartoon 
type work and illustration going on in school in that way. And I think my last class would have absolutely loved it. Yeah. I think one of the, the lovely things about silhouettes is just the word. Yes, it's a great word, isn't it? Silhouette. It's a lovely word. And of course, it, it doesn't look at all how it should sound. <laughs> so <laughs> next yeah. challenge is to teach the children to spell it. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. Silhouette. That is a challenge. <laughs> Silhouette. If they can crack that word, then they have cracked so much of English. I mean, it's, it's, it's a French word, isn't it, that we've adopted into our language. So Sounds like it. Looks like it, yeah. I think. Love would know. Yeah. It's a good opportunity <laughs> to talk about yeah, the way that language is built up and collected over time, or certainly in English anyway. And yeah, maybe even an opportunity then to talk about English as an art form as well. You know, just how beautiful some words can be and the sounds. But anyway, I've, I've taken us down a massive yeah. side avenue. Let's let's come back to Pudding Lane. Where, where's the Helen that you? Uh, where's the Helen that you found? The Helen. The, she's <laughs> there. She's there. She's right there. Where's Where's the art objectives that you found for ages four to seven, Helen? Well, my first idea is pretty much the same as as, oh. as Nicola's <laughs> idea about the silhouettes. No, it's all good. So, uh, um, looking at the silhouettes, so I've, I found some images created at the time yeah and got the children just to look at them first mm. you know look at look at the artwork look at what they notice you know take time to look really closely at these big pieces of artwork and then talk about what they notice about them all and you know putting them alongside each other and they all notice the colors that they had the oranges and the yellows and the reds in the background and all the buildings were dark so then we looked at silhouettes Mm. And, and the way I approached it was I gave the children red and yellow paints and got them to, um, we talked about um, colour mixing, learning the names of the primary colours and what happens when you mix them and the fact that orange is a secondary colour because that's some good knowledge for the you know, key stage one children uh, art objective for them to look at primary and secondary colours and got them to spend some time mixing some different reds and oranges, shades of red and orange and yellow. And they created the background that way. And again, it sounds simple, but it's an important skill looking yes. at which way their brush needed to go to create the flame effect going upwards rather than just splodging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no splodging. We had no splodging <laughs> actually to think about the, the up and the down strokes that they needed and then adding some yellow on top, you know, to, to create those different effects for the background. We left that to dry and then... Yes, we had, I think we used sugar paper. So the children were given some pieces of sugar paper. We're showing how to create buildings, how to cut out the windows mm -hmm. with supervision and stick them on the front, on the top of that. So that was the very similar, but with a primary colour focus. Yeah. Um, and then the other activity was to use charcoal. And it's great to use charcoal because then you talk about where charcoal comes from. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got that, that whole sort of neatly ties in. So got the children to look at, what a, a Tudor house looks like. So right at the beginning of our learning, we did this. We created Pudding Lane mm. as it was. So the children did some some drawings of Tudor houses, looking at their very specific designs and patterns. First of all, they had to go just with the charcoal, just creating lines and marks and experimenting with it and patterns. Mm. And then, then they did some images of houses using the charcoal. Well, we, we did have a box of charcoal for them, but also we do quite often when we're at forest school, the children will collect charcoal from the fire pit yeah. to use. Um, so it's a really nice art material for them to use and to understand where it comes from. Yeah. Does that come under the heading of using natural materials? Yeah. I would talk to the children about how that was a natural material we're using. Yeah. Charcoal burning is a profession that's kind of gone out of fashion now, but it's mm. an intangible cultural heritage one. So it's protected by right. UNESCO. And it's absolutely fascinating to, to watch okay. how it's done. In fact, it amazes me. Ha having seen a charcoal burner at work now, it amazes me that you find bits of charcoal at the bottom of your fire pit because I, I see how really? much work they go into getting their huge, great mm. vats full of charcoal how oh, really? solid yeah. it is and yeah how productive it is for, for the heat that you get afterwards mm. but that's also a, a science element isn't it and it's one for showing off to people just how important art is because if we hadn't had ancient humans picking up bits of charcoal and drawing with them we may yeah. never have known the the power <laughs> that they had to to fuel our industry there you go mm. bringing us all the way back to history <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have time for in this episode, folks, and indeed this story. If you'd like to talk to us about anything you've heard in this podcast, or if there's a subject you are soon to teach that you'd like us to cover, you can find us on social media using at Teach Happily, or leave us a review using your favorite podcast app. 
Please also share this podcast with your colleagues and help us start a story-led revolution in classrooms around the world so children everywhere can learn in a way that's effective, memorable and enjoyable all at the same time. Now, having been dabbling in fire for the past couple of weeks, on Tuesday we'll start putting it out with an original story exploring the water cycle. Right now, though, it only remains for us to say cheerio, and we hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio, and we hope to hear your story soon. soon.